Good morning, everybody. สวัสดีทอนชาวสวัสดีสวัสดี How's everybody doing? Today we are at Starbucks on Lot Pro 101. And isn't today our lucky day because we have our favorite barista working? Where is she? Right there. How can I do this? Right. Anyway, over there. So lucky day. It is a very polluted day today. Air pollution is horrible today. It's in the unhealthy range. It's it's got to be like right up there in one of the worst days for Bonkapi. It's 156 on the heat index. Or rather, on the uh, AQI, the heat index. The, the problem here is that you know it's it's not raining here in Bangkok, at least not in my neck of the woods. Good morning, good morning. Uh, however, it is hot, man. You know, it just gets hot around this time of the year, and it it doesn't stop for another six months. Uh, it's 94 degrees Fahrenheit right now, high of 101, low of 83, and the heat index right now, 105. So that should give you an idea of just how hot it is. It, it's brutal. Uh, and uh, I don't really want to be walking around in this, and the air quality, like I said, is 156. It's, it's not healthy. And not to go on and on about this, but I can't wait to get out of here. Uh, I was talking to my my pal, our pal, Jono, yesterday. And you know, he's he's uh, got a, an apartment on a high floor and he basically just looks out every morning to see what he can see and what he can't see. And that's how he determines how polluted it is. But he's got a uh, respiratory problem going on and I'm sure although it's it's not caused by the pollution well, I'm not sure it's not caused by the pollution but it is definitely made worse by, by the pollution and he's actually had to go to the doctor because of it because it's it's gotten so bad so um, I talked to him yesterday it did he, he didn't sound very good he was coughing and uh, so you know this is not a good time and Chiang Mai is suffering uh, their tourism industry is suffering right now because people don't want to come they they read about it they hear about it what's what do you get in the news generally you get bad news or you get fluff that's good news and so the bad news in Chiang Mai is that the pollution is horrible it's the, amongst the worst in the world and I could say that almost every single stream, over and over and over. It's terrible there. Uh, you know, uh, my thing is that right now the government is doing nothing, and they won't do anything. They're not going to do anything for probably two months. The election is next month, May 14th. For some reason I thought it was this month, but it's not. It's May 14th. And because they've dissolved the parliament, they are not making any judgments about anything. This is why they're not doing anything about pollution. This is why they're not doing anything uh, with regards to the cannabis policies. This is why, uh, at least one reason why they didn't do anything about the uh, visa exemption they didn't extend it. Now, that, that may or may not be a reason. They may have just decided we're not gonna extend it. But even if they wanted to extend it, they couldn't have because they need the government to be in session. So, you know, lots of things going on. Morning, five times to spring by, say hi to Sebastian. Sebastian's coffee back by the pets. He's, okay. 
there's a coffee shop in the back of this uh, place here? I didn't know that. I know there's a weed place that's never open here. But I didn't know that, so yeah, all right, I can I can do that. Uh, what else? What else is going on? I don't know. I, you know, uh, I put up the video the other day of Mr. Expat Tom. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah, there's a pet pet club is what it's called. Uh, maybe I saw it, but I just didn't. Re I just don't remember it. The, the coffee shop. But I put the video up, uh, I think, yesterday morning. So you should go check it out. Uh, and it's about Tom's experience with getting his marriage visa. Uh, getting his marriage visa. And now it's done, or it really what it is, I, let me think. He got his marriage visa, then now he got an extension. You don't get an extension. You, you got to go out every 90 days the way he does it. Which, for me, one thing that one thing that I like about getting any visa that's just one year, you have the choice of whether you have to leave or not. You don't have to leave. Now, he always tells me, "Oh yeah, I need to get out. I need to decompress. I need to get away from time." And I understand that because. That's how I was when I was working as a photographer and traveling all over the place. I love the fact that, I, I mean, I get out of the country in a month, I might leave two or three times. And I liked it. Um, uh, but now I don't wanna have to travel. You know, if there's one thing I'm looking forward to, I am looking forward to getting out of here and getting away from the whole, you know, Thailand, Thailand, Tha Thailand. W when you live here, I can't remember what it was that I saw, but when you come as a tourist, you, you know, the honeymoon lasts for a long time. When you come in as an expat and you just get here, the honeymoon is great. And it may last for a number of years, as Tom and I were discussing and as I've talk, talked about with many people. After a while, you know, I mean, this is where I live. I'd be complaining about stuff back in the U.S. if I lived in the U.S. and I'd be loving things in the U.S. and I'd be, you know, just like I love things here. But I'm happy to be leaving. I'm not happy to be traveling. I'm happy to go to Amsterdam and to show the kids and the wife around a little bit, although we don't have a huge amount of time. I'm happy to go to Dublin. I'm happy to go to Lisbon. I'm happy to go home and see my folks. And I'm extremely happy to go to Ecuador, which that's where I'm concentrating the majority of my energy and just looking into things to see how much better is it? Is it better or is it, um, or is it not? Or is it the same? I mean, you know, eventually you're gonna run into this similar problems or you're gonna have problems wherever you go. So you gotta understand that everything might look rosy on your trip as a tourist or your trip uh, when you get to a country as a new expat. But I was thinking about it this morning, and I thought, what is it that I would recommend to people who are going to travel and become an expat? They are going to move abroad. What are some of the recommendations I would make, aside from things that might be mandatory there are things that I never thought about. Uh, I never thought about when I left, because you know, first I was younger. When you're younger, you don't, you, you know, you you're like, oh, I'll stay in a shack. I'll stay in a guest house. It's five dollars a night. That's one hundred and fifty dollars a month. Okay, great. You know, you'll do just about anything. I mean, I knew I would. And. You know, like I said, and I've said several times, I came here, I had like two bags and a backpack, a small backpack, like a day pack. That's all I brought. Um, I'm not gonna get into that again. I already did a video about it. There, there, there are certain, uh, or a stream about it, there are distinct differences. Anyway. Moving on.
if you're going to come over here nowadays and you're 20, 30 years old, you're not of retirement age or you're not really close to retirement age. Because I know several people that are uh, that have been close to retirement age and they just basically, uh, a while ago, they used to come in and out on tourist visas and then when they hit uh, 50, then they, be, they got their retirement visas. Some of them got education visas. Some, some of them studied uh, Thai, some of them studied Muay Thai. They've changed the rules a little bit on that. So obviously, the, one of the most important things is if you're gonna come over here, you need to make sure that you know how you're gonna be able to stay here. How are you gonna come here? What age are you? And how much money do you have? I mean, those are the two most important things. How much money do you have? Because that's always important. It's not like it used to be. It's, it's not quite the same as it used to be when 30 years ago, 40 years ago, you could travel all over the world. You could travel to Holland and go work in the tulip fields or, or wherever it was. Uh, you could go to Australia and work on a sheep farm. And maybe you can still do this stuff now, but I think it's a lot more difficult, at least in Thailand, to do these kind of things. You can always teach English, but like what I always say about teaching English is, um, if you really want to teach English, don't do it in Thailand to like, oh, I just want to, I want to be able to stay there for six months and three months and I just want to, I want to learn about Thailand. That's the wrong reason. Do it because you're a teacher, because you want to really help the kids. Now, I'm not saying the two go hand in hand all the time, but if you're going to, if you do want to come here and you want to be able to earn your keep by teaching English, um, I would say make sure that you really want to teach English and that you care about what you're doing because I think that's pretty important. So the visa, figuring out what visa you want, like do you have the money to get an elite visa? Do you have the money to be able to live here for say six months without earning a dime? Because I think that's more important now than ever before. Because we saw a few years back when they started locking everything down, it became more difficult for people to stay and be able to earn. People were staying here because they had to stay here and maybe they didn't have money coming in. They were here on a, uh, as a, as a short-term expat or as a tourist and the country was like, okay, well, we're locked down now. Okay, well, I'm running out of money. What am I going to do? And sometimes the ties were generous, and some, you know, something you can only expect so much. They're not going to do. You really can't expect anything. Oh, there goes one of those electric cars. Where's Patia Bob? Little tiny electric car. Uh, by the way, I want to give a couple of shout outs. Big shout out to Mr. Carnival Carnivore Chronicles, as always. Thank you very much. A little surprise package yesterday. I am stream, streaming on that surprise package right now. Uh, also to Patia Bob, <clears throat> big shout out. As always, I hope you're healthy and well and wise, as always. Uh, and also to my two moderators, Kun Gennaro, the barista hunter, and uh, Mr. 2Q, 2Q Asian, and then also uh, Mr. Carlos, who he doesn't get in the stream all that often anymore because I think he's out in the, he's out helping people, doing his thing out in the villages. And then last but not least, a big shout out to Mr. Mitch. I hope you're doing well, enjoying life. So there we go. Here's the shout outs for the day. Do me a favor, leave a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. Become a member of the channel. Go check out my Rumble channel. I'm, I finally got that thing starting to work to where all the videos are transferring over. And um, yes, it was. A, I was planning on doing one, but I thought, I don't know if I want to do it today or tomorrow. And then I thought, oh, well, I'll do it tomorrow. And then I remembered there's a couple of big fights, boxing. And I went, eh. And I was thinking about this and I thought, 
you know what, I'll try streaming a little bit later just to see, maybe I get some different people in or whatever. And I, I don't want to stream at night. And uh, I'm going to go to the gym later. And, you know, that's becoming, going to the gym It's something now that I've gotten myself in the habit. You gotta? Why do you gotta get up for anything? You gotta go to the VA or or what? You usually don't gotta do anything. Usually you can do whatever you want. There she is. That's Miss Beer. Will you be visiting Davin again? Well, Zach, I will tell you this. I spent about 50 bucks at Davin in two days. Okay? It's a great place. I like it. It's nice. You know, nice staff. Guys are nice. Girls are cute. You know, they're all polite and everything. And the coffee is very, very good. So will I be going again at some point eventually? But not in the near future because uh, it's too pricey. And, and that's the thing. It's, that's not an everyday coffee shop. Even Starbucks to me now is like, I'm like, it's kind of ridiculous when you think about it. I can, I can spend 10 baht on a good cup of coffee at my house or I can come to Starbucks, or I can come to uh, Cafe Amazon for 40 baht, and the coffee's okay. It's an everyday coffee. It's nothing special. I'd like to break my addiction to coffee, although I don't know why I really have to, other than I'd probably save a little bit of money. Uh, but it's a nice place. I will be going back to Now Cafe, I will be putting a video up of the Now Cafe. I went to Arun Cafe. I went to, uh, where else was it? The Now Cafe, Arun Cafe, Kimek Cafe, Davin Cafe. I have videos of all these places. I'd like to go back to that La Mesa coffee shop, which has the great caramel cheesecake. But I gotta wait because I'm trying to cut weight, and that takes, uh, you know, takes time. Triangle Roasters. Okay, when I, when I open up my coffee shop in Ecuador, that's what I'll call it. Yeah, I mean, you know, here's the thing. Where am I gonna go now? What am I gonna do? I'm gonna go sit at a bar? I'm gonna go drink water at a bar because I don't wanna drink beer? I like triangle grinders. <laughs> triangle grinders, well, where we grind the triangle as hard as we can. Leave it to Gennaro. Anyway, you know, where am I gonna go? What am I gonna do, I'm gonna go to the Mall Bankabi? I almost went to the Mall Bankabi today and decided no, I'm not going to because I don't want to wait until 10.30 to stream. It's only 15 minutes difference from when I streamed today. I thought, oh, uh, maybe I'll go walk around in the mall and show you guys just how, just how destroyed it is right now. It is utter chaos. And I'm still trying to figure out where am I going to go. And I'm like, I'm going to come here. However, as I believe I told you guys I think she's leaving in a couple of months but by that time I'll be gone I'll be traveling around the world for a month and uh, who knows what will happen when I get done and as I mentioned the other day um, and I just found some new things out now about the green card that you can get while you're abroad 
there's two different kinds that you can get or two different ways of applying. And so I just found something out about the IR, I think it's IR2, where you can basically apply and like within a month or two, you can get the, I believe you can get the green card within a month or two. So I'm not sure what we're gonna do because that may require, well, it is gonna require that the wife uh, is going to be, um, next door I'll be opening Badonka Cafe. <laughs> uh, it means that we're gonna, that we, or at least she will have to be there for 18 months out of three years. And you know, when you think about it, um, that's a lot of money, you know, to, and she, well, I guess she could work and I could go back to work in the U.S. Although I don't know what I would do, quite honestly. And so maybe we'll wait until I get social security and, and, uh, and go back then. I don't know. I don't know how it's going to work, but we're thinking about it. We're giving it serious consideration. And then we're also, like I said, we're really looking forward to Ecuador so we can see exactly what's involved. Now, one of the other things to think about is, you know, if you got a house, you bought a house, or you've got houses, you gotta figure out what you're gonna do with the house or houses, with your condo or condos or whatever it is. And you gotta think about what are you gonna do with the stuff inside? Are you gonna just rent the place out and get the, uh, you know, the income from it? the rental income, you're just gonna keep keep everything as a rental property. Um, you know, I don't know, uh, you know, it just depends on wh what your situation is, but if you plan on bringing a lot of stuff, you're like, oh, I got so much nice stuff. Now, again, I use Jono as an example. He had a lot of stuff that he didn't bring, and he was like, oh man, you know, I gotta go back, and I wanna bring some stuff over, and in the end, uh, he gave some stuff away, he brought some stuff back, and he sold some of the stuff because it was too much. I mean, you can always get a container, and but you know, now you're starting to, you know, you're starting to talk about, it's a big move. And that's the thing, if you're an older person, as are most of the people who watch my channel, the majority, I'd say about 60% tend to be from, or 50 and older, you might have accumulated a bunch of stuff. So either have to be ready to part with that stuff, as I did. I trashed stuff, gave it away, sold whatever I could. And I didn't have a huge, I didn't have a household full of stuff. I had a, a, an apartment full of stuff. So you gotta consider that. That's something to think about. And you know, I don't know what a container is running. It used to, when I was thinking about it, it was about $3,000. And you know, you can, you can work with uh, shipping agents and you know they, they charge by the cubic meter or whatever you can do things like that but you have to consider that now you know again if you're some young guy and you're like I don't have that much I just put everything in a bag well that's great you know you put throw your laptop you got a little camera you got your clothes you know and then you're like all right I'm out of here that's great but if you're an older guy, you probably got more stuff. And some of the stuff is quite sentimental. Now, who was I talking to? Oh, I, I was talking to Steve from Steve's Kitchen. And uh, he was telling me he's got a household full of stuff. Yeah, that's crazy. He's got a household full of stuff. Guys, leave a thumbs up, please. Don't forget to do that for me. I've only, I can only see two thumbs up right now. It's like that doesn't cost you anything except a split second of using your index finger or whatever finger or whatever you want to use. <laughs> I don't really care what you use to click thumbs up. Um, but he was telling me that he's got a household full of stuff and some of the stuff is quite valuable. Some of the stuff is quite sentimental. Some of the stuff he's not sure what to do with. And some stuff like, like me, I got, a, I got quite a few cameras. Uh, quite a few film cameras. Now, what am I going to do with them? Yeah, okay, I can sell them. I'm going to get, you know, next to nothing for them. But something's better than nothing. Or I could just give them away to people. 
and some of them I'm like, I don't want to give that away. I, I, I really like this camera, you know? So you're stuck with all these things and you have to make some hard decisions sometimes. Now cameras for the most part, unless you're involved in, you know, seriously involved in photography are not usually a big deal. Most people don't have 10 cameras. Well, you can buy a new guitar if it's not an expensive one. That's one thing that Steve said he has is a guitar, and he goes, this guitar is worth a couple thousand dollars. What am I gonna do with it? Now, I'm not sure how much he plays anymore, but he does play. It's kind of like Alex. Alex has got two guitars right now, and there's still a, a uh, what do you call it? keyboard in the house we got we got th two guitars and a keyboard in our house and I'm you know when the kids get older I'm like all right that's yours get them out of here you, they can do what they want with them you know so th that's something to think about all right I want to get another uh, want to get another drink here let me see let me see if I can do this here As always, it's the usual stuff here. I really like this gimbal. I just put it through its paces yesterday for about two hours. And it's very, very, uh, very, very smooth. Jono did not bring a lot of stuff with him. And like I said, what he ended up doing was... Uh, was going back to the States to see how much he really wanted to bring. And he still didn't bring that much stuff. And then to ship stuff over, you know, is it heavy? Well, if it's heavy, it's going to cost you a bundle. So you, you might want to wait. Listen, I got a bottle of tequila that was given to me, a very good bottle of tequila. I can't even remember the name of the company. Uh, we'll wait. We'll wait. We'll wait for her to make the coffee for us. Um, this, is, uh, this is the view here. I never sit over here because the window is not a good backdrop. Yeah, I mean, you know, you gotta go, oh, do I really wanna lug this thing around? And 2Q Asia has seen, sometimes when I go out and I'm on a trip, I've just carried all kinds of stuff. And you know what, I refuse to do that anymore. I don't wanna do it, I don't care. Let me just bring a phone. Or like, you know, if I get a GoPro, if I ever get a GoPro, I'll get a GoPro, I'll carry a GoPro. And then, you know, have a phone, a GoPro, uh, maybe a laptop, and I'm gonna have to get a new laptop soon because uh, my laptop is basically completely outdated. It's almost 10 years old now. What happened to our barista? Where did she go? She's not here right now. She's not making the coffee, so I'm going to wait. Uh, anyway, you know, I forgot to say that, uh, let me see here. There we go. All right. Uh, use the code Songkran, and I think... I think the, the code is good from now until uh, Monday morning at 12.01. So, there she is. She's looking skinny, man. She's really looking thin. Um, from, from, now, from now until Sunday night at midnight, use the code SONGCRAN and get 10% of off all gear thank you to the people who did make some purchases i really appreciate that uh, you can also become look down in the description check the description get on rumble i plan on doing a video uh in the very near future and and uh, i may just do the video and separately upload them i don't know but i'm gonna do one about trt and um 
what you need to get the TRT here and how to go about doing things. Uh, and also about the whole, well, I can't even say it right now because they, they'll immediately, well, I don't know if they will or not, but you know, there's certain words that you can't say right now because uh, the FBI doesn't like them. It has to do with waking up. <laughs> this lady and her husband have this this kid, and the kid's a little bulldog. He's like, just, he's stout, and he's only he's only like seven months old. That's the kid who's like, uh, who's uh, who's making the noise over there. It, well, it's not so much to do about the erection. Um, you know, if you're in your 50s and 60s, you probably don't have the same kind that you had when you were 18. So it may help. Uh, but it's, it's also, for me, and also some of it has to do with lo my losing weight. But uh, I'm not in as much pain now. Although my hands are in pain, but that's because um, I've been punching punching the, the bag, and kicking the bag, and trying to do all kinds of exercise. Um, I've been doing this thing, I never knew about it, I just remember seeing it, I didn't know what it was called. It's called, uh, it's called TRX, suspension training. It's kind of like when you're a, a gymnast and you hold onto the rings, and then you do the L. So I can still do the L, but only for about 10 seconds. I used to be able to do it for like a minute, can't do that anymore uh, but I really like that TRX because it, it, it it's your whole body that you're working out with so anyway uh, that's another thing let's say you got a little home gym and you want to move it over here well y you know you better get rid of it get yourself some bands or you know buy something when you get over here or wherever it is you're going uh, because it's just a hassle and you know, th then there's things like, with Jono, he bought himself a rowing machine. And we have a treadmill, it's the same thing. It's basically a piece of furniture. I tell the wife all the time, she goes, I'm not gonna really lift weights today, I'm just gonna go on the treadmill. And I'm like, well, why don't you use the treadmill at home? That way you don't have to leave. You can just stay here, you can watch TV, you can do whatever you want. No, oh, I don't know. And it, you know, the thing's a, it's a piece of furniture. So, you know, that's something else to consider. Some of this stuff, why on earth would you bring it, you know? Um, and you gotta think about your banking. I would say that it's a good idea to have a bank in the United States or the UK or Australia or wherever you are. Where's all the Aussies today? Oh, it must be uh, too late for them. Um, but you, you should keep a, a bank in, the, in, in your home country. And then I really think it's a good idea to get a bank uh, wherever you're going, like in, you know, for instance in Thailand. I think it's important, especially here. You know, if I come here and sometimes I transfer money from the states like I said for, through wise or I use um, I use a card or whatever it might be and you know if it's a card from the United States well then you know you're paying a little bit more because of the exchange rate because they don't give you the, the best exchange rate if you're using wise you tend to get about as good as you're gonna get um, Yeah, there you go. That's what I'm talking about, but I didn't want to say anything. Uh, so thanks for getting this video demonetized there, my moderator. <laughs> Not that I really care. At this point, I don't care. But I want to talk about that because that's the kind of thing that really ticks me off. Transheiser Bush. That pisses me off. I, I don't like being forced to see that. I don't need to see it. I don't care what anybody says. That's all I'm gonna say about it. I'll, I'll save it for Rumble. Uh, 
But I do have a video going up tomorrow, tomorrow night, and it's about the condo that my wife and I looked at. It was, it was about, We'll just wait a second. Everybody wants to listen to her conversation just like they want to listen to my conversation. Um, what the hell was I saying? Oh, anyway, it's about the, the, the uh, townhouse that my wife and I looked at and we really, I liked it. I don't particularly like the location and that's one of the things. And then although, also, although it looks really nice, uh, we had some concerns about the age of the place and the, the construction and the long-term care of the place and, and, and just the fact that it just didn't feel perfect. But it was a nice place, so I'm going to show that. It was in Bangkok. It was in Bangkapi. I'm going to show it. It'll go up. Um, and I got a bunch of stuff going up. So, you know, I got a, I got a, a video of the gym. Uh, where I'm going now and there's a number of them in the city and they're quite nice uh, but anyway the banking let's get back to the banking the banking is important and it's in, in a place like this I don't know about say Ecuador Portugal I heard Portugal uh, no it, it doesn't unless you're well I don't know exactly if you're if you've got money going into it and it's in excess of 10 grand then yeah it's you're gonna you can have, they they set you up when you when you first open the account you have to sign all kinds of papers like for the Pat, FATCA for the Patriot Act or whatever I don't forget the, the forms but I've already done all that and uh, I'm not stupid enough or wealthy enough to ever keep all my eggs in one basket uh, I got like five different accounts here, I got f five or six different Thai bank accounts and I have four bank, oh no, I got one, two, three, four, five, five bank accounts in the United States. Unfortunately, most of them have almost no money in them. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. The reason to keep them open is in case you have a problem with a cert certain bank. And uh, for example, uh, I got my bank account in the United States and the, the card is a, you get Delta Sky Miles on it, which is great, right? However, it costs you 95 bucks a year. And I'm really sick of paying a, almost 100 bucks a year just to have a, a card. It's ridiculous. So when I go back, I'm gonna tell them, cancel the card. I don't care about the Sky Miles. I, you know, I mean, I've, got, I've gotten a few trips off my miles, but a lot of it, you can get the miles no matter what, and. Uh, I just don't really care about it. I'd rather not have it. I don't need the card. In Thailand, if I was coming here to Starbucks, you either need a credit card, which I have, but I don't want to use if I don't have to, or you got to have a Thai bank account because they're not going to take cash here. You got to pay electronically. And so if you have a Thai bank account, you just, you know, you go, ah, scan it, boom, it's done. And you, yes, you need a Thai bank account for the retirement visa to show your funds. And you've got to set that up beforehand for a number of months. I think it's three months. Um, <laughs> cute kid. All right, let's get, let's get ourselves a coffee and say hello to uh, my little friend. Oh, what did I do with the card? If I don't have the card, I can't pay, right? Here we go. There she is, the star of the show. I want one more, please. Yes, ma'am. The star of my live stream, the star of YouTube. Her name is Baba Bobo Beer. Baba Bobo Beer. Yeah, thank you. I know I am. Buddy, buddy. Make it a Roy. Thank you, sir. Yes. Thank you, sir. Hide that. 
Yes, my card. That's why I don't want to show it. Somebody will end up spending what little money I have on it. <laughs> oh, your hair is green. What happened? You went swimming? Your hair. Sikiao. Tinun, Sikiao. It's a blonde, na? Si Dang, Sikiao. Sinamtan. Yeah, rainbow. You got rainbow hair. Rainbow brain. <laughs> what happened? You get skinny, na? Pomlonga. Mm, I think now you're more skinny. Ching. Before you have a little. Badonka bonk. Badonka donk. <laughs> you have a. Me con. Tani my me. Very skinny. Thank you. It's a, I don't know. Why? You, you don't make for me? It's not the same. Her shirt, shirt is not rock. Kapura. Uh, not rock. Goofy? Yeah, you're goofy. Sure, it's, it's a good shirt for you. Oh, uh, oh, happy song cran. Oh, happy. There you go. Thank you very much, sir. This guy's a he's a Led Zeppelin fan. Look at his tattoo. For me tattoo. No, no, the other one. That one. Yeah, so so. Led Zeppelin. He likes Led Zeppelin. I like Led Zeppelin too. You like Led Zeppelin? No. You? Tamaya. Tamaya made a tattoo Sakot. Why? Why not? Why you don't have tattoo? Me Chaba. Chaba? A clua. Clua me. La. Mukon. Vela. Ogban. Bog me. Me bogwa. Ya tattoo na. Sanya. Okay. Kabogwa. Tacha tang nan. You ja bog gone. Put gone na. Kui gun gone. Okay, one, no, one, tattoo, my me, I don't do, no tattoo, never now. Get out, go do my, me chop. When is beer getting married? Everybody wants to know. Never. No baby? You don't want baby? No. <laughs> oh, put my superb, na. Tani, are you tired? Sam sip. Jinga, she's only 29. She says she's too old to get married and have babies. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, boss. Whatever you say. Who's, who's the boss, me or you? Thank you. You know your place. <laughs> All right, so there we go. I don't know why she's so anti-guy, or so, at least she says so. She could be lying, but I don't know. <laughs> She'll have the baby cravings. God, that's funny. How about wow? My nan, would you kid? Never. 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 She just wants to stay alone. That's all. You want to stay alone? Well, I'm not going to get into about the whole... Doesn't she ever... Well, who knows what she does for that? I don't know. I'm not going to get into that. Good morning, Mr. Dallow. Good morning, Mr. Uh, 
Mr. Andy, Kun Andy. Mr. Dallow, your first name is I'm late. <laughs> Well, you know now that this video, why are there so few thumbs up? Are you guys lazy today or what's going on? No thumbs up. I haven't got any notifications that you guys have bought any shirts or hats or anything. I haven't got jack shit. What's going on? I must not be beautiful today. I think she's saying that because a bunch of geezers or what. No, that's not what she, I've, I've talked to her before about it. And, uh... I think it's the same reason as um, Preo, where maybe she got involved and she just didn't like being under somebody's thumb and she's figuring, hey, you know, I can have a good life and I don't have to deal with it. And if she wants to have a little fun sometimes, you know, maybe who knows what she's doing. I don't know. And I don't want to go there. None of my business. Uh, but, you know, a lot of Thai girls say that and... I don't know what the deal is, but a lot of them end up pregnant. So, you know, they end up pregnant and married. I'll tell you a little story before I go on about this subject. Probably about 10 to 12 years ago, I was going over to the Mall Bankapi. Yeah, I should make something up like that. Mega Malin morning show. Uh, I was going over to the mall. Um, all right, all right, Hong Kong. How you doing, man? Anyway, I was going over to the mall, uh, to the grocery store. This is before they changed it around and for the fifth time. And I used to go and, you know, like every day, kind of like I go now. I go every day, every other day. And... Uh, I go up to the counter, you know, I, I see the same people and they, you know, they remember me and some of them, they know I speak Thai or they know I can give the, my phone number and I, I get a discount and all that stuff, you know, because they, they give you discounts because uh, I have the mall card and it, you know, eventually it adds up to some halfway decent money. I mean, you know, it, it uh, sometimes it's a couple hundred dollars for all the money that we've spent there. But anyway, I go up to the counter one time, and there had been this girl there, and she was there, uh, you know, all the time. I'd see her there all the time. Oh, hello, how you doing, you know? Not much more than that. And then one day she said something to me, and she said, aren't you ever going to ask me for my phone number? And I went, oh. I was a little shocked, you know, because I'm, I'm an old geezer, right? And she was, she was all right, you know? And I said, I don't think my wife would like that. That's my way out. I mean, you know, I'm married. So I'm like, I don't think my wife would like that too much. She wouldn't appreciate it. Me giving my phone number to you. And so, I mean, probably three months later, six, maybe six months later, six months later, I see her and she's pregnant. I don't know how many months, but she had, let's say it was six months later. She was probably three months pregnant. I'm like, I guess you, you know, nature was calling you. The, the womanly urge was calling and she found some guy who, you know, knocked her up. And now it's, it's been years and she still works there. I don't see her much. I, you know, they, they move him around there at the mall. But I just thought that was kind of funny. You know, I thought... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. I want your phone number. I want this. I want to go out with you. I want to see you. Whatever it is. And then, you know, a month later, she's pregnant. She's knocked up, you know, however long, longer it is. She's knocked up. So, you know, they're on the prowl just like men. Anyway, let me read some of these. Uh... Be more Ron. Will you ever stop about that? Because if you ever mention her again, I'm just going to block you. Why the fuck would I collaborate with her? I don't even know her. She was nice when I met her. 
I have no urge to collaborate with her or really anybody else. Anyway, that's the other thing you need to prepare yourself for. If you're gonna, if you're gonna, okay, we, we already went over the banking. I think it's important you get to banking. Now, I've, I used to say it before, oh, go to a place if you can for, and spend six months in the place if you can, three months at least. Now I'm like, all right, because of the current situation, maybe spend uh, a month if you can. Gennaro's a perfect example. Gennaro's not sure about Thailand. Okay, don't come to Thailand first. That, that's, that, I would say that. Because a lot of people come here and they just, oh my God, because it's so different. So go somewhere else. Go to Costa Rica, go to Ecuador, and then come to Thailand. Or go to Malaysia, then go to Thailand. Spend a month in each place. If you can't afford that, spend a couple of weeks. Um, well, I've dodged a few bullets. Many years ago, I dodged a few bullets. <laughs> when I lived in the States, I dodged a couple. <laughs> um, but anyway. I think that's something that people don't give enough consideration to is do the do, do some research on the ground do your research ahead of time I you know I, I got to bring up Jono again and he, he really planned to come here but he planned you got to have a plan you always got to have a plan even I had a plan when I came here my plan was very simple kind of like me. I'm not a complex kind of guy. My plan was get the money for my business, plan on staying a year, seeing what it's like to be completely away from everything. Have no responsibilities. And see if I liked it. And then I'll go back home. You know, and over time, things changed. But if you're older, especially if you're older, and you want to make a move, one thing about Thailand is that you're somewhat secure in knowing that if you move here, you can be stable because they're, even though they change the goalposts, they move the goalposts, and they say, okay, now you have to put uh, a million baht in the bank instead of 800,000. Well, if you've already got the 800,000 in the bank, they're just gonna go, okay, you're fine, you're grandfathered. They don't, usually, they have not done that in the past to where they go, okay, well, you're gonna have to have that much money too. So if you come over and you know, you've been, you've been sitting on 900,000 just to be safe, well, then you're not gonna need the million. So that's something to think about. And that's one reason why Vietnam, in my opinion, is not a really great option. It's funny you're talking about Cape Down Gennaro because I was in the gym the other day. I, I mentioned this, I think, the last stream or two streams before. I was in the gym the other day and there was this guy from South Africa there. He was a psychologist um, out by where my kid lives uh, in Rangsit. And he came out here because he, uh, he does some work out here. He has, he has a couple, uh, what do you call them, uh, patients. And we started talking about, you know, why he was here and how long we've been here and everything. But uh, I, I don't think, um, I don't think I've had anybody in the chat from South Africa. I've met a couple of South Africans here, but um, from what I know about South Africa, and I've tried to do some business there many years ago, I tried to put on a fight there, a bare knuckle fight. 
and it almost came off, but at the, I wouldn't say the last minute, but in the process, uh, the South African Sports Authority, sports body, uh, made it known that uh, it's not safe. It's not very safe. I will tell you about how unsafe it is. Um, and we were gonna do a, a, a show at this casino, but the sports body said, you must use gloves. And the Burmese who were gonna go over there were like, we're not gonna fight with gloves. That's the whole reason we have our sport is because it's bare knuckle. Now we know all about bare knuckle and all the, all the uh, bitchy, we'll say bitchy, all the bitchy people who were cowards and, and, and thought that there's no bare knuckle here. Of course there is. There's been bare knuckle here, there's bare knuckle in Burma, there's bare knuckle in Cambodia, there's bare knuckle all over. Just some people don't want to believe it. In South Africa, the crime rate is quite high because of the poverty. And some of the police, they don't have the means to take care of the neighborhoods. And some of the neighborhoods are quite wealthy, they're quite affluent. And so what the, the, the neighborhoods do is they band together and they hire private security. And they don't play around there. They do not play. Uh, there's, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of drug problems there. There's a, you know, like I said, there's a lot of poverty. And any, anytime there's poverty, there's desperate people. And so, you know, um, that's not to say that there's not some really nice places and things to do and things to see. And, but what I was told is, if I went to this casino, which I can't remember the name of it, um, but they told me, if you go to this casino, don't leave unless you have other South Africans with you and they're driving because they know how to go about getting from point A to point B without having problems. But if you go outside and just walk around, you have to be aware because you're gonna get robbed, <laughs> you know? And so that in itself made me go, well, you know, I'll do it just because I wanna pull it off. And it didn't come off, unfortunately. I really wanted it to come off, but it didn't come off. And that's something else to consider is that wherever you're going, what's the crime rate? You know, like I said, with Vietnam, the visa situation is such that I wouldn't feel stable saying, I'm going to retire here and live forever. Not the way things are now. The crime rate there is apparently very low in Vietnam. Um, and, um, you know, if you're the kind of person who doesn't mind moving around and traveling, then okay, fine. But if you're the kind of person who want, and, and this is me, I want to settle. I want to know I got a home base. I want to know I have a place where I can stay. I want to know I have a place that I'm good and they're, they're not going to just arbitrarily go, okay, all you foreigners have to leave. We're not going to renew any visas. So, you know, if once your visa runs out, you need to be out, which they did in Vietnam. Uh, I did have a friend who went to uh, Mozambique. He loved it there. I don't know that it's a safe place to, 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 to live. He didn't talk about that, but he did say it, that he was on the, uh, one of the beaches and it was absolutely gorgeous and that it was inexpensive and that uh, uh, he was on the beach and he had the beach to himself and you know there was people that would walk out and serve you and you know that sort of thing. No, there's not a retirement visa in Vietnam, but there is a five-year visa. Uh, I don't know how difficult it is to get. I was looking at it the other day, and it's very unclear, and that's the thing. You know how rules and laws with immigration can be, wherever it may be, and that includes here. There is some, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The laws are not always clear. They're vague and they're written that way so that the immigration officers have some clout. They have some leeway in how they deal with things. So, you know, that's something else to consider.
you know, imagine you go there and uh, they say, oh, well, sorry, you got to leave in seven days or, you, you know, you got to leave right now. Sorry, you're out of here. That can happen. And so you got to, you really got to plan out where you're going to go, what you can do, what's your backup plan. Uh, and, you know, uh, well, my own backup plan here. You know, it, it basically is get somewhere short term to kind of regroup and figure out what's the best option at the moment. Now, this is one of the reasons why I'm considering or we're considering um, trying to get my wife U.S. citizenship. And that's because there's options. There's more options. It's easier. Now, as I said the other day, in Ecuador, for a Thai person, this is, I, I'm surprised that there are not more Thai people there, although it is quite a distance from here. It's not quite a distance from the United States. But Ecuador is very lenient when it comes to uh, Thais moving there. You got the money. You, you're a Thai person. You just go there and you, you move. You don't need a visa. You don't need anything. Good morning, Joe. So why aren't more guys who are, say, Americans, who have Thai wives going, hey, you know what? Let me try somewhere. And I don't know about Costa Rica. But why are they not going, oh, let's check out Costa Rica. Let's check out Portugal. Let's go to, to Ecuador because it's fairly easy. You don't even need a visa. I mean, that's the one place my wife don't even need a visa. I had to set, set up our trip to where she has a Schengen visa because she went to Spain and it's a multiple entry. So it serves her well for Portugal and for the Netherlands and in uh, United Arab Emirates because we're only in the airport on both legs of the journey. We're only there for about three and a half hours. No visa necessary. Um, Ecuador, no visa. So the only place is Ireland, and that's in the works. So hopefully she'll find out really soon. Yeah, you know, the thing, Gennaro, and maybe this is okay, you know, as long as you have the funds, is that Australia is fairly expensive. Now, if you're living there, obviously you can whittle down your expenses because once you learn the rules of the game, the price will go down. And that's something, uh, actually I think I was talking to 2Q Asia about it, whereas the first month, the first couple of months when you move to a place, even here, you're going to spend more than you will spend in, in the future because you need the setup. You need to spend money for setup. You get here and you go, I really want to have a hot water maker. Oh, I really want to have a rice cooker. Oh, I need, you know, I don't like the furniture in this apartment. I want to, they can take the furniture out or I don't want to pay 500 baht a month for a refrigerator. I'll buy my own refrigerator. So those kind of things are things to consider too. You're going to need that money. And in my opinion, really nowadays, you need, a, you need at least six months where if you're, just to get set up, you need six months to cover the, your expenses. Plus maybe, I'm gonna say $1,500, 50,000 baht or so for setup. First, last, deposit. You're gonna need money for all that. Now, you know, when I came over here, I was like, I had no idea where to stay. I think I stayed at the Nana Hotel for like the first three or four nights. And I talked to some chick and she goes, hey, I, I know where you can stay. Oh, really? Okay. And that's, I, in the beginning, one of the ways that I figured out how, where to stay and where were good prices and good places is I just talked to the Thais. They'll tell you, you know, they, they got a brother whose aunt, uh, you know, a brother who's, uh, 
you know, long or cousin or somebody, you know, has a sister who owns an apartment complex or runs an apartment complex, you know. get me started on airline prices that's another thing you know so what do you do I mean uh, you buy a one-way ticket to come over here that's something you can do or you can buy a ticket and you set it for a year in advance if it's possible it depends on what kind of ticket you buy and then you, you make it a point that in a year you're gonna travel back to uh, you're gonna travel back to wherever you come from yeah, I've talked to, uh, to numerous people about places like Uzbekistan, uh, Kyrgyzstan, all these other places over there. And apparently some of them are quite nice. Uh, but I'll tell you a place that you might want to look at, Gennaro, maybe it would change the way you think. I, I'm just going to say try Latvia. You know, try Latvia. Try Romania, try Croatia, try Armenia, Albania, try some of those places. Try Greece, you know. You know, you, re you really, if I was to do it all over again, I would give a lot more consideration to where I decided to move. <laughs> yeah, okay. The Ukraine, uh, before all this started, uh, you know, I did consider going uh, when the whole thing with Crimea took off and I didn't go because of my hip, because I thought if I gotta get out of the way, I'm not gonna be able to get out of the way. Well, you know, this is something else you got to remember. When things are dirt cheap, there's a reason why they're dirt cheap. I would not forget that and I would not downplay that. Generally, things are dirt cheap in places for a reason. And if you're looking at labor that is dirt cheap, it might mean that the quality of labor is not great. You know, it used to be, we would get our air conditioner fixed, it was 300 baht, it was nothing. 200, 300 baht. Then it went up to 500, now it's like 1,500. 1,000 to 1,500. You wanna get something electrical done, it's gonna cost you. You know, some, some kind of thing where a tradesman is gonna come in, it's gonna cost you, it's, it's still gonna be expensive here. It may not be as, as expensive as back in the States, but still, it's gonna cost you. Now, you want to get a motorbike to go from point A to point B? Well, any guy who can get himself a license can become a motorcycle driver. So the price is going to remain fairly low, depending on the price of fuel. So you, you can still get around in Thailand fairly cheap, although prices are not what they used to be. And that's something else, is that when you go to a place, you got to consider I mean, you really want to go to, you want to go live in Venezuela right now? Or in the past, I mean, you really want to go there and live there? I don't know, man, because, you know, in the, what's going to happen is eventually things level out and then prices go up and, and they go up and up and up and up, inflation, and, you know, that's something else to consider. And even Jono was saying to me, we had talked about inflation as a whole, and he's constantly looking online to check out things about inflation. And the inflation here is out of, it's crazy what's happened here. You want to look at food prices now compared to how they used to be. They're 30, 40% more here in some instances. Not always. I mean, some of the prices, are, they remain pretty uh, uh, stable. But uh, there are many things where the prices have gone way up. Uh, I don't know exactly what it is. Maybe it's the supply chain. Maybe it's fuel prices. Maybe it's just more difficult to get there. I don't know. 
but I can tell you that prices have gone up and I am not the only one who thinks this. Visit Italy via Bangkok. Lima, Peru. Uh, I've heard good things about Peru, but I've also heard that you want to get anything done, it can be a, it can be a huge pain. Kind of like Uruguay, Paraguay, those places. They're, they're places some people they really like them. They, they, I don't think they would be for me. Uh, but you know what do I know? I've been to Panama and Nicaragua and Guyana. Where else did I go there? Um, I can't remember off the top of my head, but uh, I don't think I'd like to live in Panama. I don't think I'd. But the bottom line is if you want to move somewhere, pretty much everything that you need to do before you leave is going to be similar. You know, you need to get set up financially. You need to make sure that, you know, some, some countries, they don't allow money, like pensions to be transferred over, over, uh, overseas. Uh, Dallow, you paid too much, really. You can still easily get a haircut for 100 baht. Maybe 120. But 200 is like, it's too much, man. You don't need to pay that much. It's just like guys going, oh, I, I paid 500 baht for a two hour massage. The other day I got a foot massage, 180 baht. No tip. None. And they didn't expect it. Where is not really the topic today? You know, one of those lists I brought out was, it included uh, the Bahamas. And I think any time you go to the Caribbean, it's gonna cost you, man. It's gonna cost you. Now for you, maybe that's the, you know, you may, I don't know, I guess it depends on how much you have and how much you're willing to spend. Uh, I've been to the Bahamas before when I was younger. And I, I loved it. I went scuba diving there. Actually, I learned to scuba dive in the Bahamas. Well, I got, what do they call it? Uh, I got certified uh, in the Bahamas. That was the first time I saw a shark underwater. And it wasn't a big deal. Uh, yeah, it wasn't a big deal, really. It wasn't, it, it was something like a nurse shark or something. I forget what it was, but. Well, I mean, it, hey, it's nice. It's nice there. I, I, I've been to the Virgin Islands. I've been to the Caymans. And those places are great. You know. Well, one of the things for me, Dallo, is I don't like going to the places because I just don't. I'd rather just zip it off myself because I don't have much hair. And have Alex touch it up for me. And it, 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 it doesn't cost me anything. If I go to the shop like I did the last time. The last time I had a guy cut my hair, the time before that I had the older woman who was telling me her love story with some guy that was quite clearly not who he said he was. You know, that's another thing. I mean, I will say this. The other day I, I, I got my hair cut and I went and I had a pedicure and a foot scrub. And all of that cost me 800 baht with the tip. So what's that, 25, $24, something like that? 24 bucks for a foot spa. They, the girl did a great job on my feet. My feet are nice and smooth. Um, and, uh, and I got my hair cut. So that's a good thing. That's a bonus for living in a place, but I don't think that's a deal breaker. I mean, unless you got a big head of hair and, you know, you need a stylist every time you get your hair done. So what else do we need to think about before we come over here? Houlihan versus Patia versus Phuket. Uh, you know, I would live on the outskirts of all of those cities. 
Phuket is not one of my favorite places. I mean, I did live in Phuket. I lived there for about a year. And I lived in the heart of Bangla, man. Uh, yeah, I lived right down the street from Soi Bangla. And it was okay. Pattaya, uh, I wouldn't want to live down on uh, Beach Road or anything in the city. I'd want to live on the outskirts. And the same goes with Hua Hin. And Hua Hin, uh, quite frankly, this is something else you need to think about, you know, which I talk about here all the time. Uh, is it the kind of place where the noise is going to get on your nerves? I can't tune out noise real easily because I think if it's unnecessary blathering, if it's... Uh, and I was talking to a Thai girl yesterday at the gym about this, about the noise pollution, about the air pollution, and about the government. And that's another thing you got to think about, is the government. Do you really want to move to a place if the government is not uh, stable? Uh, Phuket's going to cost you a bit more. Uh, Patia is, uh, uh, I think, is one of the least expensive choices. And I would live there if I was living, I didn't live right in the, you know, if I lived somewhere in Jam Tien or something like that, maybe I would live there. Uh, and I loved, I told you before, I loved Bali. Bali is a great place, but I don't know about living there. Visiting for a week, fantastic place. But people can come to Thailand, they go, oh, fantastic place. Ah, but it's polluted now, the air pollution is terrible now. You know. So, for the Aussies, maybe Bali is a great place for them to live. I would really need to give it a longer stay to, to really consider whether I want to go there or not. Uh, apparently, the visa situation there is not real easy to get a long-term visa, but I don't know how it is now. That's what I knew a guy who lived there, and he used to tell me that that it was a pain in the ass. But you know, most people say visas are a pain in the ass just about everywhere. So that's something else to think about. Um, traffic, getting around, a transportation system. The transportation system is important. Do you really want to ride a motorbike in Phuket? I don't. Windy roads, lots of rain, quite windy, uh, drivers on the road not so great, not so talented, we'll say, not so skilled, and that leads to a lot of deaths, and that's one reason why I haven't pulled the trigger and got a motorbike, and it would be far more convenient. Uh, maybe if I was out in some little village somewhere, yeah, you know, like where Jim lives, then I would get myself a motorbike or a little car or something like that. Yeah, but not, no. Yeah, how we all doing, everybody? Don't forget to leave a thumbs up for the millionth time. Really low numbers today. No super chats, no, virtually no thumbs up. Nobody likes the stream or what's going on? I'm getting insecure. I've got insecurity. I've got issues. Uh, Ubud, I've been there. Uh, yeah, well, I don't. I don't listen to my wife about what I like and don't like. I, I listen. Uh, I listen to myself, and she still doesn't get why I make a big deal about the pollution. And I say, because, you know, it'll take years off your life. Well, there you go. All right, let me show you something here. Look how skinny she is now. Uh, 
Yeah, traffic was, uh, traffic, you know, it wasn't terrible because we were using a grab and we weren't in a big hurry. Um, my wife might have been in a hurry, I don't know, because she had to work. She had to work like five days out of the seven that we were there. Uh, but for me, it wasn't a big deal. And the, the prices were quite reasonable. It, was, it wasn't Grab, it was uh, Uber. But transportation is definitely something you need to think about. All right. There we go. <laughs> I like. Well, many food, many food cup. For many food. Couldn't kid ang. Bye bye, kun ba ba bobo. You? Couldn't name mine? No. Lena Light. I'm putting Lena Light. La. Couldn't kill Lao, man. Ah. You keep Mao. No, I keep Mao. You take Mao. No. No. Oh, wow, right in front here. She's showing the video of out here they're playing with water. Can you see that? Show, show. My hand. Sorry. Sorry, you can't see it on her phone, but. Um, I've seen very, very few people playing uh, with water. On the way over here, I didn't see anybody, not one person, and it was 10 o'clock in the morning. I, I didn't see one person shooting water. Now, I was on the Songtao uh, on the 13th, on the first day, I'm sitting on the song. I was coming back from the gym, actually. I was with about five other people, and there were some kids who threw water, and I got a little bit wet, but not very wet at all and I've seen some kids and a couple of older people maybe 10 people in my area in, in the area where I live Happy Land and that's it they're the only ones with the water I haven't seen really anybody my wife and, and Nicholas and Alex went to Central World where they went to Shake, the Shake Shack and uh they ended up shooting each other with water and a bunch of people and things were things were a little bit active there but you know you really want to get crazy there are certain places you go in Pati there are places Sukhumbit there are places there are some places where you can go and it gets absolutely crazy but this area is not really one of them and if you're on a motorbike now people don't throw water at you but they're not supposed to. So that's something else. Uh, Bob beer, yes. That's that. I don't know why she changed it from beer to Bob beer, but she's crazy. That's why. You may not know it, but she's nuts. She's absolutely crazy. <laughs> she's ba. She's ba. Beer is ba. Beer is ba. Ba. Um, but something else to consider, and I know maybe this is not a reason to, for some people it might be. Food is another reason to, well, for me, I like Thai food. Now, I haven't been eating much lately at all. But if you don't like the food in the country, why are you gonna move there? 
I mean, you can always make your own food. You can, so there are things you can do to alleviate that. But, and I, sorry, I have to say this, but the Philippines, their food cannot compare to Thailand's or Vietnam's. They have some good dishes, of course they do. But many of them are just, it's just not good. That's, that's the only thing I can say. And I'm not trying to slam the Philippines, so any Filipinos watching, don't get all butthurt about it. I just don't find the food there to be very appetizing. There are some good things like the uh, lechon, you know, and uh, what's that soup with the pork, you know, uh, the pork knuckle and all that stuff. But I find there's a lot of Thai food that's much better. So that's something else to think about. You know, if you go to Paraguay, and I don't even, I have no idea what the food is like there, but if you go there and you go, God, I just don't like the food here, would you really move there? I don't know. If you go to Costa Rica and you, eh, all right, here comes a little, uh, are they throwing water here? No, this truck is not throwing water. Yeah, pork adobo, okay. No, this is a political uh, vote for me thing. I, see anybody don't let her fool you she likes to be on camera she's a camera hog but you know that's something else to think about do you, I like the food there I love the food in Vietnam long term I don't know how healthy it is uh, you can find some Thai food that's pretty healthy you can always cook your own food. So, again, uh, that's another thing. Gennaro, of course, he brings it up. Well, that's, that's something else, the culture. There are quite a few places that I've been, and while short term, I was like, okay, I like this place, it's nice. I found that some of the things that take place, uh, I don't, I wouldn't like the place enough. I wouldn't like the culture enough to want to live there. The climate is something. Sometimes Thailand is simply too hot for people. Who was it I was talking to the other day and they said, you know, I'm having a re Oh, it was, uh, it was Tom. He was saying, you know, I'm not walking as much because I got a real problem with the heat. Now, even if you're in fairly good condition, and you're not overweight, but you're older. The heat may cause a problem for you in Thailand. It, you know, it causes problems for older people around the world. So do you really want to live in a hot, humid place? For some people, that's a deal break breaker. Uh, my wife says she likes cooler places. She wants to be in a place that's cooler. I'm like, well, I don't know because I know when it's like 70 degrees, you're like wearing a sweater talking about how it's freezing. So do you really want to live in a place that's 40 or 50 degrees? You know, that's something else to consider. And then for the, for the men out there, especially the single men, uh, the women are a consideration. If you find the women attractive in the country that you go to, okay, that's a bonus. That's icing on the cake. It is not the cake, though. It's not everything. And it's very easy to get lured in to believing that, oh my God, this is the greatest place because you had a good, you had a good route the night before. But you can have a good route just about anywhere. And you know, there are attractive women all over the world. Now, if you've got an affinity for Asians, okay, yeah, all right, I get it. If you like, you know, blonde hair, blue eyes, then maybe you need to go to Denmark. You need to go to Latvia or something like that. I don't know. I, I personally like the heat a little bit more, but I will say that Thailand, uh, there are times of the year when Thailand gets just brutally hot. something else to think about something else to think about
Miss Baba Bobo. Miss Baba Bobo beer. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's see. What were we talking about? The women? Yeah, the women. The women. I don't speak. She's saying how Im, 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 you said it, Im, impolite I am when I speak about her. And it's, she knows, yes. Bye, Louie, bye, Louie. Bye. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Joe. Thank you very much. You are the first, so you know what that means. Good luck for you all day. Here in Thailand, if you're the first, if you're the first person, you have the most luck. You're the first customer. You have the, the, the very good luck, supposedly. So you always want to be the first customer of the day. Anyway, thank you, Choke BDU. Appreciate it. Thank you for not, for stopping me from being shut out and not earning a dime. Um, appreciate that. Uh, let's see here. What was I saying? The women. Yeah, you know. The women, come on. I would say if you go to a place like, I don't know, let's say that you go to a place and all the women have mustaches and they have hairy armpits and you don't like that. Well, then why would you go there and live there if you're a single guy and you know? With women and with sex, what's most important, I think, is proximity. Are you in an area where there's a lot of women around? Because if you're in an area and there are no women, what are you gonna do? You know what you're gonna do. You're gonna talk to Rosie. Either that or, you know, I don't know. Anyway. Grand National Day in UK, UK today, so I could use the luck. Very good. Grand National Day. Glad to hear that something's going on. Today is technically the last day of the official Songkran Festival. And you know, I've only got wet one time. I'm surprised they don't have uh, water guns inside of Starbucks. I don't know why. She's not around, I don't know where she went now. She's over there. Yeah, there's the, you know, sometimes in the past, at least in the mall, they used to have little water guns. And if you were a customer that they knew and you know, they knew you'd be okay with it, they would just give you a little squirt with water. Not going on now. So today is the last day of the Songkran Festival. And you know, there's something that bothers me a little bit about the Songkran Festival. And I don't wanna be an old fuddy-duddy. I'm not trying to put a downer on the Songkran Festival. I, and you know, just because I don't wanna go out and play in the water anymore doesn't mean that I don't think it can be fun because I do think it can be fun, of course. I just don't want to go out into the city, which is a pain in the neck. I don't want to go out where they're playing half, half it's going, it's like they're doing it half-ass. So I'd want to go somewhere where it's just madness. Now the problem with that is that means I got to go out and it's going to take me a while to get there. It's it, My wife asked me, oh, you want to come here? She went to the Shake Shack. Now I gotta say something about the Shake Shack, which is something else to consider, the price of food, the price of groceries. How expensive is the cost of living? Obviously that's important. Thank you very for a chilled beer. Thank you very much there, Kum Dalo. I appreciate that. I'm gonna have to tell her that she has to chill. Um, the cost of food is important. The cost of living is important, you know. What do you want to move to a place you're gonna if you're gonna pay more than where you're maybe you're living in the United States and you're like, okay, I really wanna live there. I wanna live in Sydney. But you know, the place you wanna live is three thousand US dollars. Do you really wanna pay that? Well to some people that's a pittance. That's not that's small money. To other people they're like, Are you kidding me? I can't afford that. I don't wanna live there. You know. 
So the cost of living uh, is quite important. Now, the Shake Shack just came to Bangkok. I've heard about the Shake Shack. I've heard about it for years. Never been to one. I wanted to go to In-N-Out in Vietnam, but it was a little pop-up stand. It was only there for half a day, and they had a limited number of burgers, and I didn't get there in time, and I never got to go. So I haven't had an In-N-Out burger in over 30 years, and I loved In-N-Out back in the day. So they went down to Central World to go have fun, play in the, hey, thank you, Andy, <laughs> Shake Shack. I gotta tell you, here's the deal with the Shake Shack. And I, I think it was Jim who said, overpriced. The value is not there. Nicholas, I have a little video of him. He liked the burgers. Now, they got three burgers, three fries, uh, two shakes, and one soda. Let me ask you guys how much you think that cost here in, in Thailand. Now remember, a good burger in, in Bangkok will run you anywhere from about, and I'm not talking about, I mean, even Burger King is a little bit pricey now. Uh, I, I will tell you something else afterwards. But the average burger is going to cost you, you know, decent burger is going to cost you like a double cheeseburger. It's going to cost you between 200 and 250 baht. Knowing that, how much do you think three burgers, three drinks, three fries, how much did that cost at the Shake Shack? You will be astonished at how much it cost. And I will say that it it costs more than six, seven hundred baht for three sets. So how much do you think that cost? Anybody want to venture a guess? Make a guess? Anybody? Is there Moss Burgers? In I think there is actually, but I don't remember to be honest. There's so many different burger joints now that there used to be a couple over by Jono. Um, there's a, a place that Tom and I went to. He turned me on to the place. It was a Muslim place and it was very, very good. I don't remember the name of it off the top of my head. Uh, but I will say this. I don't know that I would go to the Shake Shack because of the price. The burgers are not that big. Even my wife said the burgers are a bit small. Three burgers, three fries, two shakes, and a Coke. 1,600 baht. That's like me going to uh, uh, where is it? Uh, uh, Davin Coffee and ordering a meal for everybody in the family and a drink and maybe, a, or, well, a meal at, at Davin and a dessert. 1600 baht. That's what it's going to run you. That's what? $45? 45 bucks? For three burgers and fries, you know that the Coke doesn't cost much. A really good shake at Burger King costs a hundred baht. And that's a, a big, that's the biggest that they have. A small one costs, I think, 80 baht, something like that. Maybe it's 80, 90, 100, I don't know. Or maybe it's 78, uh, 60, 80, 100, I don't know. Yeah, that's a lot, man. So, is Bangkok cheap? No, Bangkok is not cheap. You know, it, it's, it, I was talking to somebody about this earlier. Bangkok is not cheap. It's a big city. 
granted, it's not as expensive as some cities. Uh, I can go and get a massive two pieces of salmon. Massive. 1,450 baht. Two pieces like this. And they're thick of salmon. 1,450 baht. So, if anybody wants to tell you that Bangkok is dirt cheap, tell them they're out of their mind. Now, I don't care what the guy who's been living 47 years in Japan says. Most restaurants in Bangkok are far cheaper than restaurants in Tokyo. That's the bottom line. So food is something you need to think about. You know what I miss from the States, and I haven't had it in a, I don't even know if it's still in business, is Jack in the Box. Is it Jack in the Box? Is that the name of it? I think Jack in the Box. I miss that. I used to miss the, uh, the Del Taco orange shake. But, you know, I don't eat that kind of stuff really anymore. I will say this. The wife was getting ready to go out and the kids were at home and I was thinking I was gonna go out and, I, you know. And she says, listen, I'm gonna get some Burger King. We look for Burger King, but because the mall is closed, the Burger King at the mall is completely shut. It's not there anymore. The nearest Burger King was like 40 minutes away. I'm like, go somewhere else. She gets Schmegdonald's. I said, okay, if you're gonna get Schmegdonald's, you know, get the kids what they like. They get, the, they like the chicken burgers. They like the fish sandwiches. They don't want the meat. They don't want the beef. I said, you're gonna do something. Get me a, get me a couple of burgers. So she gets me a, a Big Mac. It's four patties. Now, the patties are not, they're not each a quarter pounder. They're, they're not that big. She got me a double cheeseburger. What do I do? I take the, the bread off, I take all the bread off, I scrape off all the junk, I put all the patties on top of each other. That's six patties. Then there was a pork patty we had, a leftover, I don't forget what it was, it was a, pork burger or something. I scraped up all the sauce. I had seven patties because I wanted the meat because now I've been lifting weights and I just feel the need for that big hearty meal. The beef, where's the beef? I had seven patties. I downed them like they were nothing because they were next to nothing. Now that, and we got the kids fish burgers, chicken burgers, there was like three fries, which I didn't have any, there was three drinks, 830 baht, so almost 50% of the cost of uh, the Shake Shack. Yeah, you can find some good deals at the food court and those kind of places. Uh, and compared to the UK, yeah, most, most places are gonna be cheaper than in the UK. Not everywhere, but most places. So that's something I think it's very important is the cost of living. You know, obviously, for especially for people who are there on a, a fixed income, or, uh, you know, they're on Social Security or they got a pension and this is how much they get and they're not getting any more and they need to stick to the budget. And, you know, once in a while they can go out for a nice uh, beef wellington or steak or something like that. Uh, even me, uh, I go to the I go to the grocery. I almost never buy steak because I find it's not worth it. I can get a piece of meat, a keep piece of beef for two hundred baht. You know, that's six bucks, but it's not very good. If I want something good, it's going to cost me four, five hundred, eight hundred baht. That's still twenty bucks, twenty five bucks U.S. for that kind of. I'll just get ground beef. I can get all kinds of ground beef. You know, and I'll make my own burgers. So, you know, there, there's things to think about like that. Uh, and then the other thing is, and people don't really think about this, but I, I've been thinking about it a lot. What does the Thai giver, government do for you as an expat? What do they do for you? 
What do they do for you if you are a senior citizen? And for some people, that's extremely important. Like I said, if you're on a fixed budget, what do they do for you except take your money? And that's something that I think is very important. Granted, you know, I'm not saying they got to give you everything. They're not providing free meals and that kind of stuff. But like I know that in Ireland, in Ecuador, in quite a few places, you get discounts on transportation. You get discounts at restaurants. You get discounts all over the place. Um, you know, what is this here? Nothing but make it hard to live and stay with without a hassle. Exactly. Okay, Scott and all, got to go shopping for dinner with the boss. Thanks for the stream. Say hello to the boss. <laughs> Say hello to the big boss. You know, happy wife, happy, happy life. And what it really amounts to, I mean, people say it that way, and that's the nice way of saying it. But if your wife is happy, then your life is going to be smoother. You're not going to have to listen to bitching and moaning and complaining. And you don't do this, you don't do that. If you do a couple things on the honey-do list, life is much easier. Yeah, they make you do a TM30. Two coffees, two sp small pieces of carrot cake, 14... Uh, pounds UK, which is what? How much is carrot cake here? Carrot cake. They don't even, they don't even have carrot cake in uh, Starbucks anymore. They don't carry it. I don't know why. They did have it in uh, Davin uh, Coffee the other day. It was 180 baht. Here the, the cakes are 150 baht. So two cakes, that'd be 300 baht. Two coffees anywhere from 110 to 160, depending on what you get. So yeah, around 600 baht, uh, 500, 500, 550 baht. That is, and this is the thing with coffee. Coffee prices tend to be fairly similar across the board, across, around the world. Prices tend to be around the same. You know, a Starbucks in America might be a little bit more than Starbucks here, or it might be a little bit less. So that's something else. You're going out for coffee, you want to get a good coffee. That's one thing Colombia's got going for it. And well, I haven't been there and I don't know firsthand. From what I understand, Ecuador is the same way. Costa Rica has good coffee. Um, there's a lot of places with really good coffee. So, but that's something else to think about. You know, there's a lot of things. I would say one of the, one thing to do before you make a decision on where to live, and I've said this before, pick out three places. Whittle it down to three places. If you don't have the funds to go to all three places, then do some serious research. Uh, whittle it down to three places and then write down your must-haves. Uh, write down your deal breakers. A deal breaker for me, if I had known about the pollution here back in... 94, 95 when I came over here. And I had seen, oh, Bali is the pollution level is far lower. And the prices are pretty much the same. And, you know, I really like it there. And I really like it in Thailand. Which one would I pick? I picked the place with the least pollution, the least traffic, the least, the least noise pollution. And one thing I was talking to this girl at the gym about the other, the other day is how... Thailand expects to be a high income destination in the near future, in the next 10 years. That's what they're trying to do. And maybe they will do things like what I'm gonna talk about, but 
one of the things they need to do, and one of the things we were talking about is, how can you have a, a, a place that's gonna be a, it's gonna be a place where the money people come, and yet you can't even clean up the, pol the pollution, the, the, uh, uh, the canals. You can't clean the canals, the canals stink. You go by a little, a little canal, it stinks, it's full of garbage. Is that a kind of is that the kind of place that you want to see? Let me tell you something. I've been to a few high-end destinations. Cannes was one of them. I didn't I cannot remember seeing any pollution there. That's not to say that there isn't any there, but I don't remember it. Now in Thailand, what I remember is you go walking through a market. You're going to see garbage. You're going to smell really good food and you're going to smell dirt disgusting odors how can you be a high-end destination if that's the kind of place that you are so they need to do some work in the next whenever their goal is five ten years they need to do a lot of work cleaning this place up and I'm not talking about just Bangkok and I think that things have gotten better with the oceans but I still think they need to do better which brings me to another thing that I don't usually think about, but what about the environment? Where are you going where they're, and I'm not huge on the whole eco-friendly and being green and all that kind of stuff, because I think it all evens out in the end. That's one uh, bonus that Costa Rica has. They're quite eco-friendly. They care about the environment. Now that's a small country. I don't know that Ecuador is the same. And my buddy whose place we're gonna stay, uh, well, it may take years, but they better start on it sooner than later, here. Uh, the thing about Ecuador, my, you know, my buddy said, oh, your wife might, like, might not like uh, Guayaquil, or Guayaquil, I don't know, I gotta see how you say it, Guayaquil. She might not like it immediately. When she starts getting out into the countryside and she gets out to my place, she's going to like it. I said, okay. So I want to see. Is it the kind of place where I just go, oh my God. And I will tell you, not to pick on the Philippines. I'm trying to think of other places. And uh, also in Indonesia, there are places like this. So they're both, in my opinion, they parallel each other. But you go to the Philippines... You see a lot of garbage, a lot of poverty, a lot of just absolute, it's just ugly, ugly pollution. You see it here too. So that's something, you wanna put that on the list? You wanna live in a beautiful place? And guess what? The more beautiful the place, the more developed the place, the more they got their act together in the place, the more developed the, the country is, the more expensive it's going to be. The higher cost of living you shall bear. So that's something to really consider. There's a lot of things to consider, man. And, you know, if you're an older person and you're a little wise, you can save yourself some grief and some time and, of course, money by doing your research. You know, and, and I, I, I have to laugh at the guy who was giving Jono a hard time online. And I know he didn't mean to. Here comes a truck full of people. Right over there. They're hunting for people to splash with water. Oh, he just stopped right there. You know, the guy gave him a hard time. But as I said, and I've said several times now, the time that he spent planning was more of a financial thing and how he wanted to live. And uh, I think it was wise that he did that. Because if there was something that I would have done, I probably would have worked, I would have gutted it out for another two, three years. I probably could have socked away $100,000 in two, three years because I was making some good money at the time. Now, who knows? I, would have, I might have pissed all that money away. <laughs> I might have pissed it all away. 
Uh, but in that two or three years, I might have matured a little and thought, oh, I don't really want to, I got to be careful with this money, you know. Uh, I don't know how it is now, Andy. I don't know how it is now. You know, there are some definite benefits of living in Thailand. So you gotta out, you, you gotta, you know, I'm a Libra. I don't usually say this. I never believed in this. But the way that I think, I think about positives and negatives, pluses and minuses, yin and yang and all that kind of stuff. Um, I knew that would be picked up right away. And is that, I was like, is that beer working behind the register? And then I thought, kind of looks like Preo. But then I looked, it's not somebody else. I don't know all these people. I don't profess to know everybody at every Starbucks here. Uh, let's see here. Hey, yo. Hindsight is always 2020, but tomorrow is always dim. There you go. And that's why Sometimes it's really beneficial to sit down and try to detach yourself emotionally and just look at things from the standpoint of, you know, positives and negatives. And I, I think that there are some really viable options to Thailand nowadays. I don't think Thailand is the best place to move, but you know, the thing about Thailand is the people are generally always very, very polite, very, very nice, and I like that. I like the fact that as long as I'm polite to somebody, they will be polite to me. I cannot remember the last time, well, I can remember, it was on the song tower, the guy who, when I was filming, he gave me a hard time, and I basically told him to get out of my face. That doesn't happen very often, though. I probably had two, maybe three instances with ties being nasty or getting carried away in all the time I've been here. And that's pretty low. That's not very many. So that's something to think about too. How are the people? Are they friendly? Do, will you be treated well? How will the government treat you? Which is my problem here. I'm not so keen on the government. I'm not so keen on the political instability and the, I'm, not, I'm never really high on politics anywhere. It doesn't matter what country it is. So that's something else to think about. But I do think if you really want to do it, it, and this may sound simple, I'm not trying to oversimplify things, but I do think that it, it there's some weight to it. I think it's, it does take, you should consider this. You just, like Gennaro, he's in that position. Take those three places, write down the positives, you know, get a piece of paper, divide it in half, positives, negatives. Don't look at it emotionally. And then if you have, if there's two places and you're like, ah, I can't decide this between uh, Greece and Thailand and uh, I don't know where. Latvia. You go, wow, this is really great here. Um, Gennaro, I considered living in the Netherlands many years ago. And what I was told by the Dutch and what I learned in my research was that the red tape there is if you're just somebody, now maybe if you got plenty of money, but I, at the time I didn't have plenty of money. What's new? Uh, working there is not easy. And it was gonna be a little bit of a headache to, to live there. And so I just went, eh. and not to mention fairly expensive. More expensive than I was willing to spend. 
It was out of my budget. And yes, it gets very, very cold there, which of course my wife is like, oh, I can't wait to go there. It's gonna be cold. And I'm like, uh-huh, yeah, we'll see. You'll be ducking in for hot cocoa, uh, you know, as often as you can. You cannot buy land in Bali, but you can lease a house villa long term, but you must hire a cleaner. So, you know, Andy, that in itself, for somebody who wants to live in a place long term, that can be a major issue. That can be something that would stop a person from moving to the country. And that's why you look at, uh, you look at Ecuador. You can buy a piece of land. You can build on it. You spend $45,000, boom, you got residency. Now, you gotta be there for, I think it's 21 months, and then you get permanent residency. And from there, you can work towards citizenship. That's not all that expensive. And you own the land. None of this BS where, oh, well, you can't own the land, but you can own the house. Okay, so I'm gonna build a tiny house on wheels. So, but if anything ever happens, I can just take my little house away. Or I can just go, I don't care what happens to the house. It's going to be my house, but it's someone else's land. Who wants to do that? I mean, the reality is, for some people, that is definitely a deal breaker. I mean, if you think about it, it is a deal breaker. Healthcare, hospitals, et cetera, is a consideration. Um, definitely. And the cost of healthcare, the cost of insurance. My buddy told me he pays about $100 a month in Ecuador for private insurance, and his insurance is absolutely fantastic. In the United States, he pays $800 a month. And the insurance is the cheapest insurance he can get. And he's, I think he's 62. And he's in, he's in uh, good health. He's in really good shape. He used to be a personal trainer. That's uh, it's beer's replacement. So that tells you something. A hundred bucks in Ecuador for private insurance, and the healthcare is very good there. Compared to 800 in the United States. Now our insurance has gone up, it's about a, well, we have the same insurance for all three of us. It's 150 something dollars a month, but now we have insurance for Alex, and I forget how much that is, uh, but it's, it ain't cheap. It's something like, you know, it's like 80 bucks. Well, you, you, it may not be cheap in the United States, but it's, it's cheap compared to the United States. But um, because of his age, it's not all that cheap. It's like 80 to $100. And then we are going to, once the policy ends, we are going to transfer over to that same insurance company, and it's gonna cost quite a bit more money. It might be, for three people on the policy, the cheaper policy, I think it's around 5,000 something baht. It's about 150, 160 bucks. And it's gone up over time. For that same price, that's what my insurance will cost with the new insurance company. And it's not the best insurance, but it is good insurance. So, yeah, healthcare is definitely, and you know, what is the quality of care? Uh, for a long time, Cambodia's quality of care was, uh, it was not good. Now it's started to get much better. So, you know, do you want to live in Cambodia? There's another place. But healthcare is definitely an issue. And then for some people, like in the UK, in Australia, I don't know what the law is in Australia, but uh, your pension may be affected 
if you do not live in your home country all the time. And in the UK, I know one guy, he's, he goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, he stays for, I think, four months, and then he goes back there for six months, and then he comes back for four months. But he told me, he said, if I stay longer, uh, my British pension is affected. I don't get as much, and he can't afford that. Well, it's good to know. Yeah, I, I can't, you know, for me, I can't see living in another Asian country. And there's a reason for that. Unless the wife was to transfer from her job and get something, you know, something, uh, you know, some kind of a good package or something like that. I can't see us ever living somewhere else in Southeast Asia. Where are we going to live? Vietnam? Eh, difficult. Cambodia, eh, I'm not there yet. Although my buddy, he loves it there. He loves the fact that he's there, not here. He's an older guy and he's single. Uh, Malaysia, eh, I don't know. It's Singapore. Eh. No, I've been there. I've I've been there many times in Singapore, and I've stayed there for a month at a time. And it's a nice place. But I don't want to live there. It's just, I don't like the vibe. So that's something to think about. You know, there's always something. And you got to weigh the good with the bad. English is well spoken and understood in Bali also, isn't it? Yes. And some people, let's face it, some people, especially those who are older and set in their ways, again, I bring up, Jono, who, you know, he knows about three words of Thai. He's been here almost four years. He doesn't want to take the time to learn it. You know. Yeah, Singapore is great for a week. Um, it's, it's good for a couple. For me, it's a good for about three, four days. Three, four nights. Now, when I went and stayed for a month, I was on the company dime. And I was staying at the uh, Conrad Hotel. I had a big suite, and it was it was nice. You know, I mean, listen, everything was on, like I said, on a company dime. I want something to eat for breakfast. Boom! I just order something. It's it's done. You know, I want something for for dinner. Order room service. But I I couldn't live like that on my own, not working for the company and paying for everything myself. And I just don't like Sing. I mean, I, I'm not going to say I dislike Singapore. That's not true. I do like Singapore. They got their act together for the most part. Um, but it's a work-oriented country, not a fun-oriented country. I don't care what anybody says. Uh, and uh, it's, it's not my cup of tea. I, I wouldn't want to live there. So, and as a family... Now, you know, if there was a work opportunity or something like that, eh, you know. And yeah, if you're a single guy and you're going to move to Singapore and you think, oh, I'm going to get myself, you know, a, a couple of girls, we're probably going to find out about each other. You get yourself one girl, you break up with her. She may know a friend of a friend, and then that means, oh, well, you're, you're off limits. And it's that kind of place. It's like living in a small town. Yeah, well, that's another thing. If you're uh, into the wacky tobacco, uh, it's not a good place to be. Same with Malaysia. So for us, I can't ever see us living anywhere but Thailand in Southeast Asia. And I still think that even if Ecuador is really nice, there has to be a, a, a big upside to move there. Because something else to consider is that for, you got to get to the place. That's going to cost you. And the good thing about South America is that you can get to it uh, for a reasonable price, depending on where it is that you're going, from the United States. If you're an American. If you're not American, well, then, you know, if you're an Aussie, you want to be going back and forth from Sydney to, let's say, uh, Argentina. You want to do that once a year, twice a year? 
after a while, that gets really old, these long flights. They get really, really old. Um, well, that is that is something that I'm telling myself. Why not just move somewhere else in Thailand that I feel would be more conducive to the lifestyle that I want? No, there's not even a close. I mean, you can say the Philippines. Some people like the Philippines, but I'm sorry. I mean, you know, I and I've said this a million times. I know quite a few Filipinos. I'm friends with Filipinos there. Um, and I've been there many times. Now, I haven't been there in about 10 years. But I, I prefer here. I prefer here, I prefer the vibe here, I prefer the food here, I prefer the transportation system here, I prefer uh, damn near everything here to there. And, you know, if I was to consider Portugal and Ecuador, well, what is the upside? There has to be a big upside. One of the upsides for me in South America is that from uh, South Miami, flights are, are four or five hours and it would be relatively inexpensive uh, it's, it's kind of like going from I mean even from Bangkok to Kosamui is a couple hundred bucks 150 200 bucks well you know you're gonna go to Ecuador from Miami it's about 250 212 to 200 and well to 400 but most of the time 250 bucks is about the norm so that's a bonus. That's a that's a that's a positive. But I can tell you that my parents don't care if I'm that close to them. Most 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 of the time there is no urgency to me having to run back to the United States. Um you know, I don't know Gennaro. I know that uh, my wife was not all that fond of Spain. Uh, you know, it was okay to her. Eh, like they say in Thai. Chui chui. Eh, you know, nothing, nothing overly special. Uh, however, and I'm hoping, kinda hoping, that she sees my buddy's place the beach is fairly nice. The vibe is good. There's some positive things going on. The kids like it there. And she goes, hey, this place is all right. I, you know, I could live here. Um, and, you know, in my mind, the only way I would go there is and, and move there. Because there are some positives. I mean, I can live in the United States and I got free health care. I don't have to pay for anything, but it is through the VA, which is, uh, as 2Q Asia can attest to, uh, can be a bit of a hassle, and it's not always quick. You're not going to be seen very quickly. So maybe Ecuador has a bonus there because the health care is as good or close to the health care here, and it's, it's cheaper. Uh, something else is that you can own the land. So feasibly, with say $150,000, you can buy the land close to a beach. I mean, very close to a beach. You can build yourself a home. Maybe you build yourself a little guest house that has a attached little restaurant and coffee shop. Once you get it set up, you just pay the locals there to run the place and you oversee it and you own all the land and you own the house and you know you're done so to me I mean you know eh, maybe that's a bit of a dream maybe that's you know it's an idea that is harder to implement than I think but my buddy did it and he's got a really nice place so you know, what I want to see is the area. And 
I've been meaning to have him on, but he's been very busy lately. And uh, uh, he did show me video of his place. I've seen video. I've seen. I've live streamed with him. And his place is very nice. He's got his own pool. You know, it's like four bedrooms, and it's it's quite nice. I haven't seen the village, and maybe I. Maybe I can get him to shoot some of the village before we leave. I don't know. But, you know, I'll do that when I'm there. So that's something else to think about. Penang, not that much to do in Ipo once you've seen all the tourist buses. Yeah, I mean, I'd have to take a little more time in Malaysia to make an informed decision. But uh, what I've seen, what I saw in KL, and there was one other place I went to. Well, I've been through, uh, you know, Anon. Eh. I think I would be, I would say, well, I would be comparing to Thailand, and I don't think I could compare it to Thailand. And I know a lot of people like Malaysia because, oh, it's so progressive, and you can get so many things, and the government is this and that, and I don't know. For me, I would say... It's not going to work. Alcohol and pork products are, are important. Well, I can tell you I eat a lot more pork and chicken now than I used to eat, uh, than, than beef. Uh, and then I used to. I used to eat a lot more beef. And it's because the beef, halfway decent beef, like I said, is expensive. It's going to cost you here. You want to get some Wagyu beef, it's going to cost you. You want to get some good Australian beef, it's going to cost you. <sighs> anyway, wow, we're at, uh, we're almost at, what, two and a half hours? Yeah. So, you know, like I said, the only way to me, unless you got a photographic memory, the only way to really consider what you need from a place and what you're gonna need to bring is you gotta write it all down. You gotta formulate a plan or put it in a computer, whatever it is. You gotta formulate it by positives and negatives and what you like and what you don't like and what your experiences are there or are not there. You know, what are the deal breakers? I, I think it breaks down to that. It's, it's not to oversimplify things, but a big deal breaker for me is knowing that when I walk outside, I'm breathing in extremely filthy air, which is one reason why, like I said, I want to get out of Bangkok and there are other places to go. And who knows, in another three years, pollution might not be an issue here. Although I kind of doubt that. And th that's one thing about, say, Ecuador and some of these other places um, that I think they have an advantage. There are advantages in some of these other places. You know, there used to be this guy on, on YouTube, and he had this big family, and I don't remember what his name was, but he's a bit of a goofball. Um, but he had some place in Costa Rica, and it was very, very nice, and it didn't cost him all that much. But that was probably five to seven years ago when I would watch him. And I think the prices have risen there in Costa Rica. Thailand, Europe, USA. That's another issue. Then you gotta think about airfare and the travel time. Uh, do you really want to travel every three months? I don't. I don't want to travel every three months. I don't want to, I, honestly. Now, maybe it's because I've traveled to a lot of different countries and I've uh, you know, seen a lot that I wanted to see. But do I want to like live three months in Thailand, three months in America, and three months in wherever, Ecuador, we'll say Ecuador or Portugal or something like that. That's a lot of traveling. That's a big travel expense, especially if I go, hey, you know, the kids got some time off, let's fly them over. Okay, now you're talking about four people instead of two. Now granted, in the future, 
maybe they can pay their own way and there's no problem and I, you know so that's not a real consideration but the time that you spend and the to me I don't enjoy the traveling part as much as I do the getting there and being there my wife always wants to stay in Bangkok close to the kids but because of the air I told her I am going to rent a place in Bang San so the air is a little cleaner yeah Bang San is nice I've been there actually I I wrote my first book, uh, uh, about half of it in Bang San, or a third of it, something like that. I wrote it in Bang San in a little, um, I told my wife, I wanna get away. I need some peace and quiet. I want some just solitude. And I went to Bang San. And the other place I went to was uh, Koh Chang in the south of Thailand, not the one to the east. So as I said before, Unless, we'll say, unless Ecuador makes a huge impression on me and on the wife, and we're thinking about, uh, you know, getting my wife her green card, and she's going to have to be in the U.S., and that, that's going to totally change the dynamics of our life. So, but unless that happens to where really we decide you know Ecuador is a fantastic place it's just as good as time and if not better I think we could really do something here well the other thing is that if she's gonna get a green card and then get a passport technically she really needs to be living in the United States and the idea is that to live there permanently now once she's got her passport doesn't matter but that's another six years away at least I'll just say six years because she has to do the three years and then I think uh, another two years after that maybe it's another five years after that I, I don't remember I was, I've been looking at a lot of different things and I don't remember all the specifics but even five years I'm 60 66 years old granted that doesn't mean I'm dead So maybe that could happen. I don't know. You know, there is something to be said about what Gennaro said is, you know, you've been there this long, why not just stay here? And by the time I hit 64, I'm here half of my life. So, you know, I'm very comfortable here. And I'm, I don't have a problem saying Thailand is a fantastic place to live. It's an even better place to visit or to stay part-time, but it's got its share of problems. And that said, what place doesn't have its share of problems? Is there any place? No. Island is about 25 miles out. So you know, when I lived in Guyana, I never noticed the good beach breezes. Last trip, once I cut my way through the air in Bangkok to Bang San, I noticed the air was blue and clear. At times, Bangkok and Chiang Mai looked like a heavy fog. Well, when was the last trip that you took, Wesley? It wasn't that long ago, was it? Uh, well, go there once, Gennaro. You may love it there. Some people love it. I mean, I I would say if you're going to go there and you're looking at it as a place to live, don't just, don't be down in uh, Patong. Don't just think you're going to live in Patong. Go outside because there's a lot of really beautiful places on the island. And you may end up living in some of the places. I know people who live in, in uh, uh, parts of Phuket that... The places are beautiful, and they don't have many problems, you know. About two months ago. Yeah, I thought it, I thought it was pretty recently. I don't know, honestly, that I would consider Chiang Mai anymore until they fix what's going on there. 
Chiang Mai, a place that's lost 55% of its tourism recently. It's, it's lost a lot of tourism. And some people, I was seeing the other day that a couple years ago, people were going, oh, how's the pollution in Chiang Mai? Oh, it's not that bad. Well, now it's amongst the worst in the world. Yeah, there are parts of Phuket that are absolutely stunning. They're beautiful. It's a little pricier than, say, Pattaya, Bang San, uh, Chiang Mai. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a little more expensive. You know, sometimes you get what you pay for. So that's something to think about. Anyway. I think this stream has pretty much run its course. I don't know if anybody has anything else they want to say. Please let me know. Or uh, what's, What is it they say? You know, speak now or forever hold your peace. I think there's a, uh, if you're an older, wiser guy, there's a lot more to consider for a place that you really want to move to. Do you really want to move here forever? When I moved here, I thought, I want to move here for a year, and I'm going to see how it is. And then after about a year, I said, I want to live here. I'm I can't see myself ever leaving here. And then once I lived here for, you know, 10 years, I started thinking, eh, maybe, I don't know, maybe I could live somewhere else. And now that I've been here for almost triple that time, uh, I think, I don't know. Sometimes you just die where you die. You end up where you end up. Andy, take it easy. Everybody else, take it easy. Please remember to leave a thumbs up if you have not done so uh, yet. If you got something interesting or informative from this stream or it made you feel better, whatever it might be, click that thumbs up, subscribe, uh, go down in the description, maybe subscribe to my Rumble channel as I'm starting to move things over there and I don't know exactly how I'm going to work everything, but I am, I have some plans with Rumble. And it's always a good thing because the way that things are on YouTube right now with some of the censorship, uh, I think Rumble is another option and I think it's good to have options. That's what I'm going to say. But anyway, look down in the description. Uh, maybe consider... Uh, consider becoming a VIP member of my YouTube channel or of my website or on Patreon or use the Cash App. That's always, to me, the Cash App is one of the best things going. That, like something like Zelle in the United States. Um, what's the other one? Oh, Buy Me a Coffee. Those are all, they're, they're all good alternatives to, forget PayPal, which is a pain in the neck here in Thailand. Uh, and you know the thing about youtube is they take a, a they take a massive chunk between 30 and 45 percent so that's why i like that's why i push the cash app and uh buy me a coffee and all these other ones but anyway that's all i got that's all i have at least until next time at least until i get another little brainstorm if you want to call it that so Thank you very much, guys, for joining me. And uh, most the thing about Thailand is a lot of people, they just keep coming back. So that's the same thing with my stream. Just keep coming back. Keep watching, please. I appreciate it. And um, that's all I have. So until next time, I'm Scott. I'm an American in Bangkok in a very smoggy Bangkok. Until next time, choke the belt, jerk and my. I don't know where beer went. Say goodbye, beer. Say goodbye, Miss New Girl King. I'll talk to you guys later. Choke the jerk and my and all that good stuff.